1958, I believe, is when he bought it. He bought it new. I was born in 62, but I grew up on it. Uh, we raised quite a few gardens with it. We raised as high as nine acres at a time with it. Uh, he had a sickle bar that used to go on the side of it. We had four acres on our property. He used to mow it off with the old sickle bar. And we used to bring our winter firewood in with it every year. We he got an old speed trailer that went with it. He bought new with it. And we'd haul wood out of the woods and load it in the truck with it. It's done a lot of work over the years. When me and my wife was going together 41 years ago, uh, my dad says, put her out there on the disc and let her ride it out there in the garden and see, what, see if she'll do it. So I asked her and she said, yeah, I'll ride it. So we done two acres there by the house and four acres across the road. I asked her if we did two acres. I said, are you, are you ready to get off up? She goes, no. Nah. She said, we'll just go ahead and ride it and get it all done. So then I went to the barn with it after we got done. And I looked at Dad and he goes, yep, she's definitely a keeper. That was 41 years ago. <laughs> and y'all still together? Still together. You still got the old tractor. <laughs> That's awesome. We, used, we had four acres on the home place. Dad used to mow it with sickle bar on that old Speedix. Well, one day he was out there mowing it down, and the hay was about that high, and he got into a bumblebee's nest. So he jumped off of it, but well, when he did, the stick went down, and of course that's a steering stick, and it just kept going in circles. <laughs> and it was laying that hay down. Every circle would make it get a little wider and a little wider, because Dad jumped off of it and ran to the house to get some heavy clothes on to go get it. So he went out there and got it. He ended up getting stung 21 times. But people were driving down the road, and the hay was so high you couldn't see the tractor. All you could see was the hay laying down. With every swipe it made, the hay would fall down. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so somebody stopped and said, what's going on with your field out there? Dad says, my tractor's out there uh, mowing by itself. <laughs> I got into a bumblebee's nest and had to jump off of it. Uh, the original remote control. <laughs> the original remote control. <laughs> <laughs> potatoes. It goes in the middle. You can either offset it to one side or have it go exactly in the middle and make your row. And then your collivators, you can either set them inside or closer, or you can put them out wider or further out. And then you can change the heads too. The other got the wider head, and then there's the skinnier head. You can take them bolts out and flip it over. Okay. They were pretty universal and stuff. But whenever you're plowing or anything like that to see what you're doing, all you got to do is sit there on the seat and the truck straight down, and that's your row. You can just see right through it. See right down there. See, Dad bought that Ford. It was a, had a shifter in here and was covered. The first week he had it, he went out to cultivate, and we'd made attachments where we could use these cultivators. Yep. There's Dad out here in the garden just cultivating away. All of a sudden, Mom started to holler. Dad turned around and looked behind him and he'd wipe the whole row of corn out because he was used to this one and he was trying to do exactly in the middle from looking in the front. But in the Ford, it was offset enough to where if he run it in the middle, it plowed all the corn out. Oh, man. Mom's hollering, you plow my corn out. <laughs> the old disc. That's the one from 41 years ago. Yep. Dad put this on here so that way he could use it behind the other tractors too. The original attachment was about this long and had a round pipe, and you had to change this to put it on there, and you could lift the disc clear up off the ground. Okay, like a PTO, yep. like yep. three-point. Yep, we're okay. almost the same, but it was that hand lever done it. Right here's what raises it up and down. Here's what raises your plows and everything. Just a single lever, and like I was telling about Dad, see when he's out there? He jumped off of it. I think it was this direction, but he didn't kick it out of gear. But anyway, he just kept circling around, circling around. So he went out there and got it. And he'd swipe it, get a little wider and a little wider. That's hilarious. The it probably wasn't really hilarious at the time. No, it wasn't to him, <laughs> that's for sure. But the old CD got broke. We had, in 97, we had an awful flood go through the home place. Dad's whole barn fell in on top of this one and his old Ford and all that. Oh, no. We had to change all the gear greasing and oils and everything and, and all the tractors. So they was all underwater. Well, at least you was able to save them. I think it. There was water toward Dad's barn down. There was water that went through the valley at the top that high where the tractor's at. So it was over top of the tractor about, about that much. Dad said, I'm afraid it'll be run. I said, oh, we changed the oil and stuff, it should be all right. So we went in here and greased it all up again, changed the gear grease in here. Is that flood why Doug had to rebuild the engine? Yeah. Or is that something just because it was old and well, it, was it was just time yeah, for it? It's it been used a lot. But gotcha. It had, like a, but it had a real bad knock to it. 
started. Yeah. And that's why I ended up having done to blow it up. I was afraid I was going to blow it up, you know, run. But I mean, it was loud. It sat there and it could pack, 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 real loud. Doug put them front cars on it. 